Okay friends, in the last class, we are talking about this interior of the earth and uh, I was emphasizing on the crust. Why crust is important? Because in the lithosphere, the crustal contribution is much, much more as compared to this mantle contribution. Because if you remember our earlier class, I was talking about the whole crust is involved and the part of the upper mantle is involved. So, that means during plate interaction, the crust and this crust, the two different plates if you are interacting, the crust is totally taking part in this interaction and the lower part of this lithosphere that is the mantle that is interacting. That is why the crustal compositional stratigraphy, crustal behavior, crustal rigidity, crustal composition that must has to be understood very clearly. So, some facts about the crust. Only the upper part of the crust is available for the direct sampling either directly or by boreholes. Then geologic studies of the high grade metamorphic rock that once upon a residing in the 20 to 50 kilometer depth that have been brought to the surface by subsequent tectonic activity provide the much useful information. For example, if you see in this figure, we have a thrust which is coming from this depth and now it is overlapping on this part of this uh, crustal system. So, if you see here due to erosion this part it is removed, it is removed. So, that means now you see once upon a time which rock was at the depth now it is on the surface. So, this is the beauty of plate tectonics. So, due to this crustal deformation due to thrusting, due to folding, the deeper rocks they come to the surface and the high grade metamorphic rock which was once upon a time it was in a high temperature and pressure regime, now they are coming to the surface due to the plate tectonics and giving us the information about the deeper crustal composition. At the greater depth all the evidences about the crust are indirectly collected. Indirectly, if you see the most significant or the most widely used indirect study of the deeper crust or the deeper earth is the seismic source, the seismic velocities. So, the seismic waves they are moving down and interacting with different crustal rock layers and they are coming as a reflected and refracted waves and we are studying here this reflected and refracted wave and we are getting the information what is happening inside. So, another one is the well logging. We have wells about 12 to 14 kilometer depth. So, we insert the instrument and these different properties that we record on the surface. So, based on these properties we interpret what rock type is inside as well as we have rock chips that is collecting from this uh, deeper part due to drilling. So, that can give us information. Then for shallow subsurface information, this is the most significant or the most widely used, most popular that is the GPR, ground penetrating radar that is very efficiently being used nowadays for the shallow subsurface information. Apart from that, we have the magnetic data, we have the gravity data. So, the if you see here the magnetic data, this is a fault and this how this magnetic anomaly is coming across the fault. Similarly, here we have a fault and this magnetic survey, air survey by magnetic and what this magnetic value we are getting just over this fault that is represented here. And another is the gravity data. So, gravity data that means it uh, uh, takes the help of the density contrast uh, of this earth material. So, here if you have a sedimentary basin, we are getting negative gravity data as compared to the surrounding. So, that means I want to say these are the indirect evidences how we can study the subsurface geology and subsurface structures. Much of our information are derived from the knowledge of variation in seismic velocities with depth and compared to it to the experiments conducted in similar pressure and temperature condition in the crustal conditions. So, that means we have this seismic data, 
and we are doing experiment at the laboratory with similar pressure temperature condition. And we are observing what are the change in rock types with change temperature and pressure. Seismic velocity interact with the depth because it increases with pressure, density and rigidity because if you going down, so the pressure increases and density increases and the rigidity of the rock increases. Abrupt change in seismic velocity is caused by change in chemical composition. However, gradational change is due to the phase change. For example, if you see here, we are going depth. So, in the depth scale, you see the pressure is increasing. Similarly, this temperature also increasing. The wave velocity is increasing. But if you see, for example, this P wave velocity, there is a drastic change at the boundary, there is a drastic change at the boundary, there is a drastic change at the boundary, but there is a gradational change from this within that layer. So, if it is the lower mantle, if you see here, there is a gradational change within that layer. So, this gradational change, it is due to change in the phase, the phase means mineral composition. But this drastic change, this is due to the chemical composition. And pressure increases with depth about 30 mega Pascal per kilometer due to lithospheric rock burden and some places added by tectonic forces. For example, go to this uh, Indian India Eurasian plate boundary. Here, thrust loading up to hundreds of kilometer. So, that means pressure will be more. And temperature, it increases around 25 degree Celsius per kilometer. So, this is called normal geothermal gradient and this normal geothermal gradient, it is 25 degree Celsius per kilometer, it is not same throughout the globe. So, in the ocean basin, it is different, in the continent, it is different, at the mid oceanic ridge, it is different, at the um, collisional zone, it will be different, at the volcanic island, it will be different. So, though in the average, this 25 degree Celsius geothermal gradient is there, but it is varies with the geological environment. So, the crust must be understood in detail because the layer we live in, all our day to day activities that is on the crust only and agricultural activities that is in the crust only. Rocks are exposed for this crustal evolution. You see, whatever the crustal evolution study, let us say the in pre Cambrian time, the crustal composition was that. In the Proterozoic, this crustal composition is that with uh, Cretaceous, the crustal composition is that. How do we study? It is the crustal evolutionary study. It is based on the exposure of rock on the crust only. We cannot go into the mantle to study this evolution. So, this crustal rocks at a different level, they are derived by tectonic forces and they are exposed due to weathering and erosion nowadays on the surface of this earth. So, this crustal evolution, the temperature, pressure, the composition that are being studied by these crustal rocks. Geomorphic processes that change the landscape that work at our or near the surface. So, this is the process, surface and near surface process. So, that is modifying this earth crust. So, that is why crust is very important to study. Additionally, there are direct or indirect, it is affected this national economy, the crustal composition. If this crustal composition is mostly metallic, the crust is metal rich that it will add to national economy. Then we have already discussed about how the neighborhood relationship, then this agricultural food habit and the region, then our groundwater availability. If this it is for example, uh, you go to um, Deccan and you go to the granitic terrain there will be groundwater problem because the crustal composition does not allow the groundwater to store there. But in contrast, if you come to the Ganga plain, you come to the coastal plains of India, it is mostly alluvium. So, that means we have plenty of groundwater there. Then our geography, geomorphology and weather, it is defined by the crust because if you go to this uh, again same the Deccan trap there will be high radiation even if in March and April you cannot stand on that. So, it affects the weather. The earth crust is upper rigid part of the lithosphere, the base of which 
is defined by a prominent seismic discontinuity that is called mohor Vesic discontinuity or moho. So, going from crust to sudden deeper, we have to face this discontinuity that is moho. So, it is a sudden discontinuity, sudden change in seismic velocity. It is due to the crustal compositional change. So, moho it is or the mohor Vesic discontinuity, it represent the drastic compositional stratigraphic change from earth crust to mantle. So, it is the crust mantle boundary which is represented by the moho. Then the crust can be divided into three subdivisions. We can say it is a continental crust, the oceanic crust and the transitional type of crust. The continental crust, it is totally of continent. So, if you go to this peninsular India, the peninsular Nisic complex PGC, it is a continental crust. If you go to the oceanic region, you go to this Arabian Sea or go to this uh, Indian Ocean, it is of a basaltic nature. This crustal composition is the basaltic, it is the oceanic crust. But in between, there is a transitional crust. So, at the margin of this continent, at the volcanic islands, they are neither fall in the continental composition nor fall in the pure oceanic composition. So, they are called the transitional crust. So, continental crust, it ranges from 30 to 70 kilometer thick and comprises 77 percent of the crust by volume and 40 percent by area. And the oceanic crust ranges 3 to 15 kilometer in thickness, comprises 54 percent of this crustal area and 17 percent by its volume. So, now you see here around 55 percent and this is about 40 percent, so 40 percent and the remaining is the transitional crust. So, these are the islands, the island arcs, the continental margin, they are representing the transitional crust. Only the uppermost part of the crust is available for direct study at greater depth all the information about the composition and structure is indirect that we have already discussed. We have seismics, we have magnetics, we have gravity, we have GPR, we have well logging. All these are the indirect evidences we use to study the deep crustal composition. Geology studies of high grade metamorphic rock once upon a time they are residing at a greater depth, they are coming by thrusting activities, they are coming by exhumation they are coming to the surface and they are giving us the direct evidences. And the foreign rock fragment like xenolith, if you see here, this is the xenolith. It is coming from the uh, deeper part due to magmatic eruption. They are also giving the information about the, the direct study about the crustal composition at depth. And the, the direct study of this oceanic crustal composition, it is derived from ophiolites. So, what is exactly ophiolite? We will study in detail while we will talk about the oceanic crust in the mid oceanic ridge system. But here I can say just the ophiolite is nothing, it is the remnant of the oceanic crust that is abducted during this collision, during this subduction. So, this is remaining at the surface now. For example, if you see this picture, these are the field photographs of uh, ophiolites and in the geological map if you see these red space, red place are the places of ophiolite. So, that means it is indicating in the northern part of the Indian subcontinent or the Indian plate while this Tethys ocean was existing, this crust, this oceanic crust, it was representing the Tethys ocean. So, once the Tethys subducted under the Eurasian plate, the remnant of this oceanic crust, it is remaining here and they are giving access to the direct study of this oceanic lithosphere. Then variation of the seismic velocity to depth results from number of factors such as increase in pressure. So, if you see here, we are going down, the pressure increases and once the pressure increases, it the rapid increases the incompressibility, rigidity and density over topmost 5 kilometer as pore spaces are decreased, fractures are closed. So, thereafter the increase of these parameters with pressure is balanced by 
decrease in the resulting from the thermal expansion. So, with the increasing temperature, so that there is little further change in the velocity. So, that means once we are going down with increasing temperature, the expansion increases, but this pressure is there to balance it. Velocities change with chemical composition and also change in the mineralogy resulting from the fact change that we have already discussed. So, the velocity it is maybe of drastic change or maybe gradual change. The drastic change is due to the compositional variation and the gradual change is due to the mineral change or the phase change. Abrupt velocity is discontinuities are usually caused by the change in chemical composition while the gradational velocity boundaries are normally associated with the phase change. And this crust if you see the few minutes back we are talking about the crustal type here you see the continental crust one is the shield another is the platform, then orogens, then continental margin arc, then transitional type is ripped, island arc, submarine plateau, then inland sea basin, then oceanic is oceanic ridge, ocean basin, marginal sea basin, volcanic island, trench. So, that means these three type of crust there exist, but uh, mostly, mostly we will deal with continental crust and the oceanic crust. The third one transitional crust though existence is there, but in plate tectonics it will be less discussed. However, this continental type of crust and the oceanic type of crust will be much discussed. Thank you so much. We will meet in the next class.